Here we're going to talk quantum mechanically what's involved in absorption of light by a molecule. Uh, what one does, as you might expect, is to look at the expectation value of a particular quantity. And the one we're going to look at is the expectation value of the what's called the transition dipole, transition dipole moment. That's defined as this quantity here. And let's take a look at that. Right, so we have the transition dipole moment expectation value is the integral over all space of some wave function we'll label this 2 times the dipole moment operator times the wave function designate that 1 d tau as we said this is the transition referring to the transition from a low to a high state or a high to a low straight state dipole so we're assuming everything can be described in terms of a dipole where you have a positive and negative region of space and moment, meaning there's some direction to it. This is psi 2 is the final state. Psi 1 is the initial state. So we're looking for a transition from the initial to final state and mu is the dipole moment operator. Let's look at the dipole moment. Remember from introductory chemistry, or maybe you don't remember, a dipole moment is defined as E times R, where R is the vector pointing from the positive to the negative. So for example, if we have a water molecule, uh, we have a partial positive charge on this hydrogen, a partial negative charge on this hydrogen, so we have a dipole moment uh, pointing from the negative region, uh, sorry, from the positive region to the negative. All right, what we want to do is to transform that into a quantum mechanical operator. So what we do is we use our operation rules. Well, there's no, uh, nothing here changing with time, no velocity, uh, no momentum. So that just transforms as E R, where R now is just the operator corresponding to distance. Okay, so that's how one calculates um, a transition moment dipole. And if the transition moment dipole is equal to zero, then you have no absorption of light. On the other hand, if you have uh, the, this integral, this calculation here, if that's not equal to zero, that implies you can have uh, absorption. So the key uh, to this comes down to figuring out what this integral is. And maybe we can talk qualitatively a little bit about this transition dipole moment. If you have some electron distribution like this, and this is the ground state, and then once you absorb light, you take the electron from the ground state electron distribution and put it into an excited state, and suppose the excited state looks like this. What you've done is uh, induced a uh, dipole moment uh, say the dipole moment initially points this way, now it's going to point this way. So the transition dipole moment you can think of qualitatively as the direction the electrons shift when they undergo the transition from the ground state to the excited state as induced by absorption of light. Uh, another way to look at it, suppose that uh, here let's draw a three-dimensional coordinate system and here is, let's make this, that's not actually a vector so it's redraw that. Okay, so light is going uh, along this direction and let's call this um, say we have rotated the axes so this would be perhaps the X and this is the uh, no this would be the Y and this would be the X axis. And suppose we have what's called plane polarized light. So recall the electric field and electromagnetic radiation is perpendicular to the uh, direction of propagation of light. So we can have oscillation in general. We can have an electric field that oscillates on the y-axis here, or we can have an electric field that oscillates on the x-axis here. So this is plain polarized light. Now what we want is for this is now an electric uh, dipole moment. 
and it's going to interact with this um, wave function here corresponding to the ground state. So if you have, for instance, a dipole moment, here's your molecule, and we have a dipole moment in the y direction, then if you have plane polarized light that oscillates in the x direction, this means you have no absorption. So recall that the interaction of a dipole with an uh, electric field vector is the length of the dipole. Well, let me just write the dipole as ER times of the angle between them. So if you have X uh, polarized light and the dipole of the molecule lies in the Y direction, in other words, if you orientate this dipole this way, then there'll be no absorption of light. This then is the uh, Y direction here. Uh, typically you're using, well not typically, but sometimes you use solutions and so these molecules are tumbling around and you can absorb light. Uh, essentially you have the dipole, the absorption dipole pointing anywhere you want and therefore you can, uh, there is some pointing along the X direction so you will have um, absorption of light. But if you have for instance a crystal and you orient the crystal in such that these uh, dipoles are oriented perpendicular to the plane of polarized light that's hitting your sample, then you get no absorption. And then as you rotate the crystal, you'll start to get absorption as this uh, dipole in the molecule becomes aligned with the electric field. All right, so that's uh, qualitatively uh, what happens. We want to evaluate this integral here to determine whether you have a transition or not. If it's zero, you can't have a transition. If it's not zero, then you can have a transition, but it might be zero for other reasons. And also, you know, this is an integral and we can use symmetry arguments like we did before to determine whether this is uh, has to be zero or not necessarily has to be zero. Now the reason we're not going to consider this in detail is that you need to have time dependent perturbation theory in order to describe the absorption of light. Why is that? Well, recall light is an oscillating electromagnetic field, so you have the electric field oscillating this way or this way if you have plane polarized light, and therefore that's a time-dependent electric field, and then you'd have a time-dependent oscillation induced in the uh, electrons and the molecule and so on, and we don't know how to do that, and we're going to save that for an advanced physical chemistry course Chem 451. So we're just looking at time independent states in, in this course. So we won't uh, develop that. Uh, it's probably online somewhere or in a chemistry, physical chemistry text if we want to look that up. But we'll just ignore that for now. But this integral nonetheless is important. This gives us a way to see uh, what the uh, dipole moment, the transition dipole moment is. And since you're looking at um, the coupling of the ground state to excited state, one of the ways of lo looking at that transition dipole moment is the direction by which the electrons move when they go from the ground state to the excited state. So this is described as psi 1, this is described as psi 2, and we're looking here at the coupling of psi 1 and psi 2, so the transition dipole moment can be thought of as where the uh, electrons shift. Brief overview of quantum mechanics of absorption of light and also holds for stimulated emission of light.